So when you want to run something from a bash shell, there's three different ways you can do it. You can use an alias, a bash function, or a script. It's similar with Z shell as well. But which of these should you be using and which is the best for each situation? So let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I guess the first thing we can take a look at is bash aliases because that's what I typically use for my short commands. So if we look at my bash RC, if we zoom in on this a little bit. So the way you define an alias in bash is you use the alias keyword in your bash RC, then a space and then the basically the short and down command you want to use for it and then the command that is run when you use that. So say with my git alias here, if I type in g into my terminal, we'll just bring that up in another one. Basically, that will run git. Or if I do like gst, I'm not in a repo right now, so that's gonna fail. But basically, that'll just run that command when I write that shortened down version. So I typically use these for really short commands or, okay, I guess this one's not a short command, but it's a single command. Typically, I will use aliases for things where I'm just running one command. You can use pipes in aliases and uh, ands and things like that, but I don't typically like to do that. If I'm going to do something like that, I will typically move it into a script. Anyway, so I guess before we go into scripts, we can look at bash functions. I don't ever actually use these. I will talk about why in a moment, but typically I prefer scripts. So if we wanted to find a bash function, say we want the function to be called hello and Basically, similar to how you would define a function in a language like JavaScript or Java, except you don't have the static and the public and the nonsense like that. You just have the name. So similar, maybe it's a bit more like JavaScript in that regard then. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is the syntax you use for it. So in here, we can just write it like we would normally write a script. So we can write, say, we want to echo hello, and then we want to echo world. So if we do that, we won't actually be able to run it yet. So we can either source our bash RC. So if we go source.bash RC, then that will reload the bash RC. The other option is just to reload your terminal. So now if we write hello, that will now run that. Basically it's a script. It's called a bash function, but it's effectively just a little script. So the thing with bash functions is you can do basically everything in them that you can do in a script. There's a few limitations, but for the most part, they are pretty much the same. So if we do the same thing in a script, so we'll just call this script, I don't know, uh, hello world, because I'm boring. And if oh, I already had one called hello world, I guess. Now I know that, that script doesn't actually override anything. That's good. <laughs> anyway, so if we have that, just do the exact same thing that we did before. So echo that and echo world. Obviously you're not gonna have the make script command. So if you wanna follow along, you'd have to go and make that yourself or you can pull it from my GitHub if you want to actually be lazy like me. So now if we just run hello world, we'll see that that will do the exact same thing that, that function that we made before did. So the reason that I tend to use scripts over functions is because scripts are a lot more portable. So if you're defining everything in your bash RC and say I'm considering to move to Z shell at some point. So when I do that, I'm gonna to have to move everything that was defined in my bash RC into my Z shell RC and it's annoying enough to do that for my aliases but I'd rather not have to do that for my functions as well so if I just define them all as scripts instead I can just continue using them as is and there's no problem whatsoever. So I did mention that the bash functions actually had some limitations that the so I did mention that the bash functions have a limitation that the scripts don't have I actually got that backwards it's the scripts actually have a limitation that the bash functions don't have so it's just because of the way that bash is set up. Basically, with a script, you can call other scripts, but you can't call bash functions. But with a bash function, you can call scripts and you can call bash functions. So if you're only ever doing everything in scripts, it's not a problem. If you're only ever th doing everything in bash functions, it's not a problem. But if you switch between the two, you might run into some issues. So my recommendation would be to stick with either doing everything in bash functions or doing everything in scripts and you will never run into any issues like that. Because besides that, you can do basically 
everything else. I haven't run into any other differences between the two. You can still accept arguments in them. You can run any commands you want to run in them and basically just get any work you want to get done with them. So my recommendation, pick one, stick with it. It'll probably work fine. So you can actually alias your bash functions and your scripts as well. So obviously you can, uh, let's just open up my bash RC again. So obviously you can alias like compiled programs, but you can do the same thing with your scripts. So say you want to alias that hello world script that we just made before. So if we make an alias, we say H and then put in hello world. We now save that. So once again, we can either source our bash RC or we can just refresh our terminal or we can quit the terminal and make a new one, I guess. I just tend to quit it because it's a bit easier, less typing. So now if we write H, that will now run the hello world script. So you can also do the same thing with a, a bash function. So if we keep this bash function in here, so this hello bash function, and instead of running hello world, we instead just run hello. So quit the terminal again, restart it. Now if we run h this time, it will run the hello world, um, it'll run the hello function. I guess if we just change that a little bit, it will be a bit easier to actually see that it's different. I guess we can just add another line in there, echo new line, I guess. Quit that, start again. Now if we run H, we'll see, now that's actually running the hello function that we defined. So if you want to do everything with aliases, I guess what you could do is you could define everything in scripts and then just alias all of them. So I do actually occasionally alias scripts just because I give them longer names than I really should and then just run it like that. It would probably be easier just to give them a proper name, but sometimes I have already set them up to work with other programs like i3 and uh, various other things and, oh, and LF and Ranger and other programs that I use. And I don't really want to go through and actually modify all those configs. So if I don't like the name in bash when I'm actually running it by hand, I can just alias it and not have to worry about changing them there. So that's one of the benefits of using aliases. So before we end off the video, I guess I'll go over some of the things that I actually use aliases and scripts for. So if I bring my bash RC back open, so typically what I will do is I will alias commands that I use fairly frequently or even just semi-frequently. So for git for example, I've got basically every single command that I use on a semi-regular basis uh, alias. Same with Angular, and I've got basically the version of, or the the options I like to use with LS fairly frequently, also alias, same with grep. And then for things like Vim and Pandoc and MPV, I've all got those either shortened down to single characters or just far less uh, characters than it was by default. And that's pretty much it for what I use aliases for. I've got some other aliases in like VimRC and stuff, but I'll save those for another video. So for scripts, what I tend to do with those is pretty much everything else. So I've got a ton of stuff in here, like all of my i3 scripts for my blocks down here. And that's one of the other things you can't do with bash functions. If you want to integrate it with another application, you're probably not going to be able to if you use a bash function. But when you just run it as a script, it's going to be much easier to integrate that. So there's another benefit of just doing everything as scripts. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of using functions. So other things I've got in here, like just general system management scripts, my torrent scripts, my what else is here? I've got one for supporting dual monitors in here. Basically just everything that I can't do with a single line command, I will just chuck into a script file and it'll just work as it is. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. And if you want to see more videos like this, then remember to leave me a comment letting me know if you've got any other ideas, because I always take some extra ideas. I've got a massive list of things to work on, but I'm always happy to add some stuff. And if you want to get notifications when those videos come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below. But as always, you can never actually trust YouTube to push updates to anyone, but I guess if that's going to be the case, then go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and you'll probably get updates there unless they feel like they don't want to push updates anymore. But if that happens, I guess, I guess we're pretty screwed then. So that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.